Nice night for baseball as the Cardinals look to keep their winning streak going in the right direction. As the Atlanta Braves are going the other way. They're 8 and 12. The Cardinals at 13 and 7. Welcome to Cardinals Baseball with Al Roboski. I'm Dan McLaughlin. Jaime Garcia, Al, will get the start this evening. And it seems like every time he goes out, he has a tough opponent on the other side. Well, that's very true. His first three starts, he was facing the opposing team's ace. Not the case here tonight with the Atlanta Braves. But Jaime's done a great job not worrying who his mound opponent is and just pitching against the other lineup. And that's really the proper approach for a pitcher. You go out there and you try to get the other team out. You only worry about what you can worry about, and that's retiring the offense. And we probably haven't seen Garcia at his best yet this year. Yeah, well, that tells you something how talented he is. He's very, very talented, and I agree with that statement. All right, Jaime Garcia, the lefty, getting to start for the Cardinals. Bobby Cox says this is it, his final season. We'll honor Bobby when we come back. My manager of the Atlanta Braves will be honored momentarily here at Bush Stadium in downtown St. Louis. And he'll go down as one of the great managers ever in the game of baseball. And he said this year is it for him. He's going to call it quits. And, of course, he is a, a former third baseman in the uh, major leagues in his playing days. And then, of course, in the front office and now at the helm of the Atlanta Braves. This is what the Cardinals are going to give him to Bobby Cox, signed by Stan the Man, a great manager, and he will end up in the Hall of Fame where Stan is. Bobby is currently fourth in the all-time win list. Tony La Russa is third, but Bobby, you know, 479 games over 500, and there you see Red Shandies, who had the career mark for wins in the Cardinal organization for a long time before Tony uh, took over that top spot. So Bill DeWitt is down there, Red Shandies, and Tony La Russa as we get set to honor Bobby Cox before tonight's ball game. Let's turn Ladies it over to John Hewlett. The Cardinals series against Atlanta this week is the last regular season visit to St. Louis for Braves manager Bobby Cox, who is retiring after this season. In 29 years, as a major league manager, Bobby has won 15 division titles, five National League pennants, 
and the 1995 World Series Championship. Entering tonight's game, his total of 2,421 wins as a manager ranks him fourth in Major League history. He has been named the National League Manager of the Year four times by the Baseball Writers Association of America. And it turns out that since his childhood, Bobby has been a big fan and one of the greatest players of all time, the Cardinals' own Stan Musial. On the field, on the field tonight, to honor Bobby Cox, we have Bill DeWitt Jr., Cardinals Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Manager Tony La Russa, and Hall of Famer Red Shandiest. They are presenting Bobby with an autographed photo that says it best. It's autographed by Stan. It says, to Bobby Cox, a great manager, Stan Musial. The Cardinals congratulate Bobby Cox, one of the greatest managing careers in baseball history. Congratulations to Bobby Cox. We'll take a look at Yadier Molina when we come back. of this four-game series, but the story of this series has been Cardinals catcher Yadier Molina. Well, he's really come through the clutch. On Monday night, he steals his 15th career base, and then he's the hitting star as he gets his first game-winning RBI on Monday night. Last night, he wasn't through as he comes through in the clutch once again. Two more RBIs. They were the difference makers in another Cardinal victory. So Yadier Molina with three RBIs, in this series and 13 for the first month. A look at Jason Mott who picked up the save last night when we come back.
Cardinals. Cardinals looking to extend their winning streak. It's game three this evening on Fox Sports Midwest, your home of the Cardinals. And Jason Modow picking up his second save last night. His first, though, was in September of 2008. And he was really outstanding last night. He really picked up the bullpen on a night that closer Ryan Franklin not available. Mott goes more than an inning to pick up his second career save, first of this year, and really save that bullpen as now Franklin well rested for tonight's game. So Jaime Garcia gets the nod for the Cardinals. He's one and one. Kawakami is 0 and 3. Cardinals and Braves. Game three coming up next. Brought to you by Budweiser with full flavor and a crisp, clean finish. It's what we do. By Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. Number one for quality tires and expert auto service. By Steak and Shake. Life needs flavor. And by Chevy's expert auto service. See your Mid-America Chevy dealers or shop and compare at SDLChevy.com. Batting practice tonight. And Matt Holliday knocked out the C in Big Mac land. And that souvenir is still in the sea. About an hour ago with Matt Holliday and Albert Pujols in the final group for batting practice. Jaime Garcia to work. We're underway and a strike to Yanel Escobar. Let's take a look at the numbers for our Marshall Wireless Sprint starter, Jaime Garcia. Well, he's pitched very effectively in all three of his starts. He's been matched up against the team's ace on all the opponents he's faced. And he's answered that challenge. It was another... One run loss last night to the Cardinals for Atlanta. They dropped a season high seven straight, and their record is dipped to eight and 12, and yet they've gotten decent starting pitching, certainly in this series, but uh, really during the streak, and that has to be very frustrating for Bobby Cox. I had a long talk with Bobby today, and it was nice the Cardinals honored him before the game and talked a little bit about his future, but he was commenting about, hey, this, this game will drive you crazy at times. It's just a matter of time before they turn it around but every time they hit a ball hard it's right at somebody the opposition hits a little bleeder it goes through and you know Bobby's seen that for 29 years as a manager and a couple about four years in the an office here's a ground ball to short Brendan Ryan with it over to Albert for the first out so Escobar retired and let's take a look at the Braves lineup Yanel Escobar, Martin Prado, and Chipper Jones. Then Troy Gloss, Matt Diaz, Melky Cabrera, David Ross, Nate McLeod, and Kawakami, the starter. Southwest Airlines starting lineup for Atlanta Braves. 
Martin Prado hitting 367 with one home run, four RBIs, but cold in this series with just one base hit. Said Danny came into this series as the leading hitter in the major leagues. He's still up there amongst the leaders, but he's been on the decline. And here we're talking about a losing streak for the Braves, and it doesn't get easier tonight facing a lefty. Braves are hitting just 216 against left handed pitchers this season. That's 26th in the major leagues. Only three home runs in 185 at bats prior to tonight. And the Braves starter, Kawakami, has the first, uh, fourth worst run support in the National League. Tomorrow's starter, Jurgens, is second worst. And then Hudson, first game starter, is like 10 worst in the, in the league. Paints the outside corner, two and two. Second baseman, Martin Prado. Over five last night. Just his third hitless game of the year. The 2 2 pitch. Hit in the air to center field. Backing up, Colby Rasmus to make the catch. Two away. A look at the defense behind Jaime Garcia tonight with Holiday, Rasmus, and Ludwig. This is presented by Dobbs, Freeze, Ryan, Schumacher, and Pools. And the battery tonight is Garcia and Yadier Molina. Chipper Jones. Chipper's one of the guys that you have to be a little bit careful with. Switch hitter, but from the right side, his natural side, hitting over 300 with both his home runs and three of his six RBIs and a lot fewer at bats, just 16 at bats against the left. We haven't seen Garcia put it all together quite yet. And that's what makes it scary to consider what he might be able to do. Well, you, you mentioned it in the open, and I totally agree with you. You know, he's advertised as having such a tremendous curveball. And particularly in the colder weather, we saw it in Minnesota. We saw it in a little bit in, uh, out in San Francisco. Just didn't find the feel of that of that curveball. So he relied a little bit more on the slider. But his fastball's got a little movement to it. He has uh, this pretty good moxie out there. He knows where he wants to throw the ball. He can change speeds. And, you know, he just goes out there and pitches well beyond his 23 years of age. Comparisons have been made about Adam Wainwright when Garcia came into spring training like he belonged to be in the, the big leagues. That was a couple years ago when Adam, and this happens you know, a lot of times with guys been up and down, and all of a sudden he, he says, that's it. I'm going to make that team. And they saw that out of Wainwright, and they thought the same out of Jaime. Into right center, and Colby has it. Tracks it down. One, two, three inning for Garcia. Cardinals coming up in their half of the first.
first rolls in and there's no score. On Fox Sports Midwest. Schumacher, Ludwig, and Pujols in the first with Holiday, Rasmus, and then Molina. David Fries, Jaime Garcia, the pitcher batting eighth again, and Brendan Ryan. Southwest Airlines starting lineup for the Cardinals. Kinshin Kawakami is the starter for the Atlanta Braves. Dan, I got a pretty interesting sky report. You see he's 0-3. ERA is up there a bit. But they say he really has pitched well. He's gotten very little run support. He does a very good job of keeping the ball down. His primary pitch is a sinker. He has the traditional Japanese slow curveball, a splitter. He was 13 years in the Japanese league, and he was a good one over there. You know, Cy Young Award winner for their comparison to it. MVP one year. Slicing into left center. Base hit. Schumacher with a new look with his uniform, maybe trying to change up his luck. Gets the base hit to left center field. Nice. No doubt about it. The good luck socks. Let's look at the defense. Diaz, McLeod, and Cabrera. Jones, Escobar, Prado, and Loss from left to right. Kawakami and David Ross, the former red behind the plate. David Ross has started three games behind the plate this season prior to tonight. And he's had at least one hit and RBI in those starts. Well, there's no doubt Brian McCann is, is probably the best all-around catcher in the in the National League. Off the glove at a shortstop, Escobar, and a, it could be an error. We'll see if they give him an error or base hit and a hard hit ball. Well, it was hard hit, but he played it off to the side. You know, it is the big leagues, and you know he he played it into a hit if they give one. But see it turn to the side instead of squaring up to it. And usually they always give a hit, but it should be an error at the major league level. We haven't heard yet, so they haven't made the ruling. And here's Pujols with the first two having reached in the first. This series, Albert four for seven. Get into some tough luck on the road trip to Arizona and then San Francisco. And we just get the ruling. They called it an error. So E6 on the play on Escobar. Runners at first and second. Nobody out. Pujols is sitting on seven home runs. Now you always want to see one of the Cardinal players get a hit. But this is the big leagues. And, you know, if, if Escobar, who was an outstanding fielder, squares up to that ball, doesn't play it to the side. You know, that's a double play ball. No doubt. Here's a 1 0 pitch to Pujols. Instead, Kawakami steps off the rubber. Kawakami you know, threw a no hitter against the Giants in 2002, the Tokyo Giants. Twice was uh, on their best nine Japanese postseason All Star team, six time All Star, three gold gloves. I mean, this kid's got a pretty good pedigree. 1 0 pitch to Pools. Line back up the middle. That's a base hit. Schumacher will score. Ball scoots away. And Ludwig winds up over at third. Just a rocket off the bat of Pools. Uh, that was a rocket, and it should be another error charged on the center fielder, McLeod. And that would be only, he only made one error last season. He is one of the best and a former gold glove winner out in center field. But he dropped that ball and that allowed Ludwig to go to third. But look at that swing. You never get tired of seeing that. That tremendous contact, concentration, the follow through. And the Cardinals are off to a tremendous start. But pile on. So it's a single RBI and an error. And here's Holiday. As Ludwig had stopped at second, so he restarted and went to third on the air. So again, if you have just joined us, Big Macland has a souvenir thanks to Matt Holiday. Batting practice knocked out the C in Big Macland, and that baseball is still up there. Here's the 0-1 instead of check on the runners and pool holes back safely at first. In his last two starts, Jaime Garcia had just one run of support and already with one run tonight. Well, that's another aspect. Jaime, as I said, has done a good job of 
not worrying about who his mound opponent is, just concentrating on the the offense he pitches against. But also in this situation, no matter what he has as a lead, take that mindset that you're pitching in a one nothing game. There's the slow breaking ball we talked about. Nothing at two to count. Holiday certainly would be a candidate for a double play, but we saw his hustle in staying out of the double play be a huge key in the win last night. You look, the outfield's a lot deeper than they've been playing earlier in this game, but there's been some rockets hit out there already. This is Kawakami's second year in the major leagues. Made 25 starts last year, won seven games. ERA was 386, 7 and 12. 0 2. We'll do it again. It's our final believe, season. It? What's that? I mean, look at the home average for Matt Holiday. I mean, if he would have been 353 layers on the road, you would, you would expect that. And I'm sure when it's all said and done, this season's over, he's going to be very proud of his home batting average. But it's been a slow start for him. The first time the Cardinals have scored first in this series with the RBI by Pujols, now with 19 driven in this year. And Tony's ball club really responds when they take that lead. They're seven and one on the year. They've had a lot of comeback wins this season, including the first two games of the series. And a one-two pitch. Breaking ball has popped up. Troy Gloss has a play. So Holiday retired for the first out. And it brings in Colby Rasmus. I was about to say, Braves and manager Bobby Cox are saying at least this will be it after this year in the dugout. You see the umpire wants him to take off some type he's, of he's got a band-aid yeah. or something on his thumb, no. you know. You know, like protect a blister or something, but but very classy move by the Cardinals organization prior to the game tonight to honor the opposing manager Bobby Cox. Have you come to expect that class with the Cardinals organization. Not only that, but you know Bobby Cox really is a classy guy. I asked him tonight. I said, "Are you going to have any input on the new manager?" And he said, "They want me to." But he goes, "I don't want to," because Frank Wren, the general manager, is the one that's going to have to work with him. I don't want to pick somebody that, you know, it's not really his choice. There's, you know, certain there are guys that have worked for him or played for him that are saying, I wish Bobby would speak up for me. <laughs> right. And, you know, Bobby's going to move into the front office. So what are you going to do? A little bit of everything? He goes, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Collect a check. No, huh? but he, he did say, he goes, look at all of our minor league teams <laughs> are, are right near where I live. So I can drive to like three different classifications and watch our minor leaguers. Oh, and two. And remember, you know, Bobby was a manager of the Braves, and I played for him in Atlanta. Then he went to Toronto, managed there, came back to the Braves, and for four years was a general manager. And then he went back down on the field when they got John Sherholtz. Here's the 0 2 to Colby. Swung on and missed as the ball scoots away. Play at the plate. Safe. Leverick scores two to nothing Cardinals. Cardinals catch a break. It'll be a wild pitch. Kawakami <laughs> gets his first strikeout. Uh, wasn't even close here. Thought he was going to win the battle, but then he drops the ball on top of it. And Albert goes out to second base. He's in scoring position. Really, this inning would be a lot worse for the Atlanta Braves. They can retire Yadier, which has been a struggle for them. You know, they could they could be have a moral victory getting out of this inning with two errors and a wild pitch and only down two nothing. Molina hit a two-run single last night for the game-winning RBI and his 13th ribby this month. It's tied for third for most RBIs by a Redbird catcher during the first month of the season. Last to do it, Mike Matheny in 2003. 
That's record with Simmons. He had 21 year. It was in 1977. And then 14 and uh, 75. 75 is tremendous. 75 year where he was battling for the batting title all year that year. The switch hitter Ted Simmons hit 333 left handed, 332 right handed. 0 1 pitch. Franks down the left field line but foul. And he's also been very productive with the bases loaded. Last year was Pools. This year Molina is now two for two with six RBIs with the bases loaded. And that's really on two swings. The grand slam on opening day and the two run single last night. So yeah, it was something the way Albert what he did with the bases loaded was almost inconceivable and we hope Yadier has that type of year this year. And we'll let Albert join. Him. I'm sure he will. <laughs> I wouldn't bet against it. The 0 2 pitch inside. Roster has been shuffled a bit for the Cardinals. Tyler Green and John Jay. Jason LaRue is activated from the disabled list. Brian Anderson option out along with Alan Craig. And Felipe Lopez on the disabled list. I talked to Felipe yesterday and he said he is not allowed to throw for two weeks and then he will be reevaluated. So, doesn't sound like that's just going to be a two week injury. Not at all. And you never know what you might have with Aaron Miles, who's a switch hitter, and we've seen him be productive here in St. Louis. Gives you a little insurance if he can still play at this level. Yeah, and that's the case. You know, last year the Cubs, you know, they weren't satisfied with him. And you know this year he went to spring training with with the Reds. They felt like he couldn't handle it this year, but he's had a lot of success he, here with the Cardinals. And if he has anything left, they'll, they'll give him a shot. I think it's great insurance policy. Three two is ripped foul again. Let's see where they shade Molina to right center, but we're starting to really see him turn on some pitches too. Well, and we saw last night late in the game they had the center fielder McLeod shifted over. A little bit towards left field, but this is where they were earlier. Now, the one thing they say, Karakami does a pretty good job of keeping the ball down, but maybe more importantly, with a defense alignment, he keeps the ball away. Pitched him in, except with one pitch. Off the end of the bat, and a fly out to center. Cloud over to make the catch. Albert Pujols now with. 19 driven in. 2 nothing after one.
not give up home runs and do not give up free passes, you're almost automatically guaranteed you're going to win, especially with this offense. It's now 84 innings at home without allowing that home run. And that's the longest streak for any team since 1972 when the White Sox did it with the first 98 innings without allowing a home run. How about, how about the uh, defense on the left side of the infield? Troy Gloss, I would assume they expect him if he hits the ball on the ground, he's going to pull it. On the ground, on the ground. <laughs> it's almost like it's a, a late innings defense with your third baseman David Freeze. He's guarding the line and you've got Brendan Ryan a couple of steps out in the outfield grass and Schumacher he's even shaded the other way too. Sure. He, he's and Albert way off the line at first base. But you know I'll, we'll bet on Albert in a foot race between Gloss and Albert. The dynamic to that we've talked to Tony the Russo about it the fact that you know, Pujols has to get to the bag quickly. And at times for the infielders, it's like they have to lead Pujols as if a quarterback was thrown to a, a receiver as he's getting to the bag. They've got to lead him there because he's so far off that line. Two balls, two strikes. And speaking with Dave Duncan about Garcia. He said in his starts, we've seen two of the four pitches. Might be a curveball, fastball, might be a fastball changeup, but we haven't seen all four working together. No, and I and I still really maintain we haven't seen the good curveball consistently. You know, even tonight. And that's supposed to be his best pitch. His, his fastball has got a little late movement on it. And as Tony was talking with our affiliates, radio and television affiliates tonight, he said. You know, if you're, uh, you have a, a right-hander throwing 88-89 and a left-hander throwing 80-89, there's a huge advantage to the left-hand. It's really hard. It's, it used to be even more obvious, but it's hard for a left-hander to throw a ball straight. Do that movement there. And that late movement to. in 92. Yep, held on to by Molina and the first strikeout for Garcia. A young man about seven or eight years old asked uh, Tony about being a left hander. He said, What's your advice? He said, Just be able to walk out to the mound by the time you're about 20, 21, and I'd like to be your agent. And you know, they still say that if you're left handed and got a curveball, you can still pitch in the big leagues. I never had the curveball, so that's why I'm here with you, Dan. <laughs> she had a strong 13 years in the big leagues. Fireman of the year. Now, Raboski. Here's Matt Diaz, who's hitting 195, no home runs, and two RBIs. And quickly, nothing in two. Only 25 pitches so far for Garcia. Home plate umpire is Dan Isonia. Dale Scott is the crew chief over at first. Jerry Meals at second. And Mark Wagner, who was behind the plate last night, he's over at third. And the strength for Jaime is, you know, he, he really is usually pitching ahead in the count. Pretty good curveball right there. It's the second time that Molina has held on to a foul tip for the strikeout. Back to back K's for Garcia. She can get him to chase the ball out of the strike zone, but you see that's 12 to 6. So it's not the sweeping or a slurving pitch. That's a good 12 to 6. Does have that slider. He's got a change up and he's got a fastball that you know, he can throw, you know, the sinker and throw the four seamer. Here's Cabrera. That looked to be the changeup tailing away from the right hand. Yeah, but look at that movement. Cabrera is a switch hitter. So, Alec, you're a championship team. And here's Jaime Garcia is technically your number five. What can you reasonably expect from your number five? What do you think? How many innings would you like to see, ideally? 160 to 170, 200. To be honest with you, you're making 34 starts. Why can't you get to 200 for any pitcher? 
whether he's one or five. I mean, that's you know that's less than that's less than six innings, averaging six innings a start. Three one. right there at six innings and a know. base hit for Cabrera. And it brings in Ross, who's hitting 273 with no home runs and three RBIs. Now, Garcia had Tommy John surgery in 2008, spent most of 09 rehabbing, and made the club out of spring this year. Beat out Rich Hill, who's in the minor leagues, and Kyle McClellan, out of necessity, moved to the bullpen. Here's a broken bat handled by Brandon Ryan. Another fine play for the Cardinals shortstop. Freeze, Garcia, and Ryan coming up. Go to FoxSportsMidwest.com. Chat live with our announcers from uh, Fox Sports Midwest. Cardinals experts and the Braves television team get in-depth analysis of the game in a new way. It's our Cardinals live chat. Join us tomorrow at FoxSportsMidwest.com. Kind of stumbled on that when you said announcers. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> what, us? What? This news to us. In the fine print on the promo, it does say... Pat and Jim will be a part of it. Oh, good. And a foul ball. It's nobody knows more about the game than they those two. Freeze pulls it foul. Hey, how about the comments Tony made about uh, David Freeze this afternoon? Pretty high praise. Very high praise, and and Tony is one that rarely does that. One of his idols, Sparky Anderson, at times had to eat his words. As Sparky would have some guy in spring training like a phenom, he just. Oh, rave about this guy at 10 games into when he was back in the minor leagues, but Tony was very complimentary of David for many fine reasons. He must have said two or three times in describing him tough. Yeah. So we got a, a hard nosed player. He's tough. He's dealt with adversities, been through a tough situation, and we respect what he's been able to do. And defensively, we're. Here at this level, we've seen good and bad. He felt like once he gets settled in, and that should be about now, he'll be a, a very good defensive player. I thought a real key in what he said, too. He said, he's not scared. You know, and some guys come up here and they get their shot. He said, young players, you'll see them get scared. He said, we have not seen that from Freeze as he strikes out, and that's the second tonight for Kawakami. Set up inside. See a little cutter right there. And starts inside. You kind of give up on a little bit. And they cut right over to the inside corner. 
good pitcher's pitch. Here's Jaime Garcia. Some uh, Chris Carpenter last night. Carpenter now 3 0. They'll face Aaron Harang in the Sunday game. And we'll head to Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. That's our next road trip with uh, Carpenter. As Tony was saying, a guy that's really gotten through his stuff right now and doesn't have that pinpoint control just yet, but he says, you know what, you look up, he's 3 0 and an ERA that's very respectable. Yeah, I mean, it, it is obvious, but Carpenter set the standard so high. He continues to win without his best stuff. Garcia on a hop to second. Martin Prado puts it away. Every Cardinals win during this homestand against the Braves and Reds. So far, so good. You can take $5 off Loge box seats for the Nationals and Marlins series May 17th to the 20th. This could lead to a discount as high as $35, meaning free tickets. So stay tuned and save. And there's nobody more frustrated than Brendan Ryan with his offense. But as Mark McGuire said yesterday, the one thing you have to really respect and admire about him is he keeps on going out and playing that gold glove defense. And you talked about the graphic in spring training, and I think on the pregame show they showed it, but the Cardinals, when he's in the lineup, win. And without him, they, they're under 500. One ball, one strike. How about his defense so far, Al? Well, he's made a couple little mistakes, but most of those have been, you know, trying to do a little bit too much. And, you know, but for the most part, he's, he makes very, very nice plays. He'll make all the routine plays. He'll make the exceptional play. That's what I said last year. But look at this. Play 600 baseball when he's in the lineup and under 500 when he's out of the lineup. Ball third strike on the inside corner. So two strikeouts in the inning, three in the game. We play two. And it's two nothing. with Cardinals Care and they have raised nearly 17 million dollars since its inception back in the late 90s and they had handed out uh, over 80 grants today and uh, all going to 100% of the proceeds of what they raised throughout the years going to kids and uh, they do just such a wonderful job that's Michael Hall the vice president of Cardinals Care and his crew is there but this is one of two big uh, days that they hand out those grants nearly two hundred thousand dollars today and well done by the st. Louis Cardinals and they should be commended for that all going to kids here in st. Louis Michael and his staff really work hard on that and a credit also to the players much of that money is raised with autographs and 
donations from the guys during the winter warm-up. And a, a great thing, Cardinals care here in St. Louis. Yeah, a lot of times the guys uh, set money aside out of their contracts to make donations used to, to the baseball fields. Broken bat, pool holes to Garcia. Nate McLeod is out number one. And the hitter will be the ninth place hitter in this lineup, Kalakami. McLeod can run, so Garcia had to hurry up. And gets over there. It's a good lesson right there. Jaime knows that McLeod can run. So instead of, you know, kind of coming down the line and running parallel line, he made more of a direct approach. So it was a much shorter run for him to get the speedy runner. If you got somebody slow afoot, you're taught to come up the line and just run parallel to it to where it's a much easier throw for, for Pujols, the first baseman, to throw it to the pitcher. But you can't do that when somebody can run. Here's a 1 1 pitch with one out, nobody on. Opposing pitchers against the Cardinals. All the praise we've given the staff for everything else, yeah, the opposing pitchers are hitting close to 300. And Dave Duncan gives them a scattering report on everybody but the pitchers. Maybe you better start including the pitcher. <laughs> There's his chart on Kawakami. I mean, I mean, I doubt the other teams are 289. Maybe even at any position in the order. Garcia will step and throw. Two outs. You can follow the Cardinals on your iPhone, iPod Touch, BlackBerry, and Android phone with MLB.com at bat 2010. Features play-by-play, -play, video highlights, and live audio broadcasts. For more information, visit Cardinals.com today. Knocked another five dollars off those tickets, right? Upcoming tickets with a win. Well, we had one last night. Yes. And we had Monday, so that's ten dollars off that upcoming series. And a busy weekend upcoming here at Bush Stadium. Sluggy night on Friday nights. Also before the game, Tom Pagnazzi will be signing in the Ford Plaza from 5.30 to 6.30. And on top of that, it's a half price night. And seats still available. And Cincinnati Reds be in town. A lot of people think they may be a sleeper team in the Central Division. Cardinals will get Johnny Cueto, Homer Bailey, and Aaron Harang. Albert is there. Steps on the bag. One, two, three inning for Jaime Garcia. Big bats coming up. the crowd through the first inning fan cam and see who's enjoying the game. Budweiser, it's what we do.
Ah, uh, yes, the thirst inning is here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Two to nothing, Grindles, bottom of the third. Dan, why is the truck in? I know what you're saying, but that's when we get into trouble. <laughs> we start talking about things like that. Here's Schumacher with his new look. The stirrups high, and he's one for one. Hey, just follow me. You'll never be in trouble. <laughs> yeah. I get uh, two sides of the spectrum. I get Ricky, and then I get you. Live life to the fullest, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> so two nothing lead, and here's Skip. You like that look? I always have liked that look. Maybe a little higher to my standards, but you know, at one time, to wear the Cardinal uniform properly, you had to show three stripes. So you're just halfway down on those six stripes. But that was the way you were taught to wear the uniform. And then George Hendrick came around. Silent George. <laughs> He may have been the first guy with his stirrups yeah. covered. Scoring first, the Cardinals 78 and 24 since 2009. How about that? Clearly only Colorado. Cardinals 13 wins this year. Seven have been come from behind victories. And that's the second most this year to Detroit. That's really a nice combination. You know, they're seven and one when they jump out to lead, and then you said they got seven come from behind wins, so you never feel like you're out of the game. Ah! The preferred way is to jump out to a lead and never give it back. Had a nice visit with our buddy John Mabry today. Speaking of doing things right, good players, and one of the uh, subjects that we got into George Kissel and the impact that he had on so many Cardinal players and then that you know guys moved on free agency or trades the impact he had in Major League Baseball amazing well, yes really did and I remember one day watching Don Sutt you know, Hall of Famer never played with the Cardinal organization and Sutton was talking to a group of people and then he saw George Kissel mm -hmm. sitting in the dugout and he said excuse me I gotta go talk to that man Went and sat down and talked to George to learn some more baseball. Saturday, May 1st, Bank of America brings you a collectible canvas print featuring Albert Pujols, available to 25,000 fans of all ages. For ticket information, call 345-9000 or visit cardinals.com. You know, George, you know, and a guy like Mabry had some real personal one-on-one -on -one stuff with him. He tried to teach him how to play third base one year, you know, Made the conversion from Shannon to right field to third base. Joe Torrey from catcher to third base. And, you know, there's been numerous guys that Kissel had a significant influence on, but noted as you know, really the scholar of how to teach Cardinal baseball in the winning ways. 0 oh 1 here on Ludwig. Reached on an air. John told a great story about George Kissel. He said, The thing I'll always remember about George outside of his wonderful baseball knowledge. He said, when I was sent down in 2004, George Kissel started the ball. So he was crying over the fact that Mabry was sent down. And the relationship that those two had is Schumacher is back in at first. But think about that. You know, a guy that's been in baseball almost 70 years at that point. Here he is with John Mabry, and he's crying over the fact that John is being sent down to the minor leagues. Uh, that's why he was so well respected is he took that personal you know, other guys, you know, some guys had a more personal relationship with him than others, but this inside corner is being called frequently. And this kind of reminds me is, you know, Mark McGuire was talking about yesterday, talking about how guys are really guess hitters and they don't trust their eyes. That's fair. Off the sidewall. Schumacher around second. On his way to third, throw will come into second, and safe is Ludwig. Boy, he is stinging the baseball right now. Swinging one of the hottest bats in this lineup. Well, he's that kind of hitter that he can get very streaky. 
And when he's hot, he can carry the load. He doesn't have to do that. But here's a pitch down and in. He drops that bad head. And what McGuire was talking about with Albert coming up, the runners in second and third. So now a great scoring opportunity is, you know, they're so dependent on video or they hit a scout report. And if a pitcher pitches against the scout report, they have a hard time adjusting. And they're going to intentionally pass him here. Why not? But one of the first things I was told is that Karakami pitches so far away. And we've seen a lot of pitches inside call strikes. And sometimes they have a hard time making that adjustment that he's going to pitch away from the scout report. This will be the 12th walk of the year for Albert Pujols and his sixth intentional already. And the bases will be loaded and nobody out. Tex Bowl, how would you pitch to Albert? U.S. Cellular Tex Bowl, fat, uh, fastball in, soft away, or we already know Bobby Cox's text would be C, walk him. Text pool holes A, B, or C at 432 432. Bobby Cox said yesterday if Ryan Howard is worth 25 million, pool holes is worth 50. I'm sure John Mosaic really appreciated that. Yeah, and Mike Shannon brought that up, and he goes, not to put any pressure on <laughs> Mr. DeWitt or, or John <laughs> John Mosaic, but uh, hey, it's back some facts. And Albert's just sitting there smiling. So base is loaded. Big spot here for Holiday, who owns four career grand slams. You, know, you understand the strategy. But it's only a matter of time for it to backfire because of Holiday and his his pedigree. This is a tremendous hitter, struggling right now at home, but it won't last. And the ball gets away again, diving headfirst and safe. Schumacher to make it three to nothing, Cardinals. The second wild pitch, charged to. The right-hander, Kawakami. All right, Dan, if you walk Pujols with first base open, now you're going to do it to Holiday. There's a breaking ball. And David Ross, really not with that patented shift of body weight, just kind of stabbed at it, got by him. The Cardinals have their second run. Again, for those of you just joining us, batting practice, Holiday put one in the sea of Big Mac land. Knock the lights out. Infield is in, so hitting lanes all over. Holiday. Ooh, nice stop by the shortstop, and he'll make the play and the outs. Wow, he had Albert out right in front of him. That's Escobar. What a play. Made a great play, but he could have gotten Albert out at second base and kept the double play in order. Watch him dive for this ball. Look where Albert is. As he keeps on running, thinking it's going to go through. But he never looked him back. They had him sure out at second base. Even if Holiday reaches, then you have the double play in order. And now they're going to walk Rasmus with first base. So Colby is getting used to all these walks among the league leaders. Walked twice last night. And this will bring his season total to 15, which is in the top 10 in the National League. His on base percentage, which is something that you look at. Is such an important stat. He came into tonight's play third in the National League. He's got six home runs, tied for second in the league. And what a start for Colby Rasmus here in his sophomore campaign. And it brings in Yadier Molina with the bases loaded. Sign up now for our race for the cure. John Kelly, a part of it. The Blues players, some of their management. And you can find out more at FoxSportsMidwest.com. It'll be Saturday, June 12th. We talked about earlier tonight the numbers that Molina has with the bases loaded. That's right. We just did. Six RBIs already. It's three walks now in the inning and two of those intentional. Molina fly to center. First time up. Mm -hmm. 
His career with the base is loaded. One grand slam on opening day against the Reds. This is the strategy that Bobby Cox used in the first game, and it backfired. Walked Colby to get to Molina. Of course, you think about the potential double play in this situation. So let's take you back to game one of the series Monday night. And Yachty would make him pay with a ground rule double. The Braves actually caught a break. That would have scored two. And the Cardinals won the game by a run. Here's a 1 1. On the inside corner. Uh, Yachty doesn't believe it, and our Southwest Fox Tracks agrees with him. But the problem is the arbitrator, home plate umpire, and I Sonia says it's a strike. And he's been consistently calling that pitch down and in or on the inside part of the plate a strike. Tough pitch to take there. Evens it up with two balls, two strikes. Ludwig with his double. Wound up at third on a wild pitch. There's pool holes. And those two had intentional walks. Colby over at first. 2 2 to Yachty. So you forced him to swing at that one as I'm sure in his mind he's going I know that's inside but I feel like I have to swing because he called two pitch the pitch two pitches ago a similar pitch inside he called it a strike. Big gap in left center field for Yadier Molina. Kawakami will step off the rubber. Big pitch here in this ball game, even though it's early. Cardinals already own a three run lead. The 2 2 shoots it foul out of play. Six pitches this same, but in that is three walks. Two of those intentional. Two, two. And this could be a double play. Four, six, three, double play. Strategy for Bobby Cox pays off. And getting to Molina, they get the double play. Cardinals lead it by three runs.
Fielder Hank Aaron joins Babe Ruth and Willie Mays as the only players to hit 600 home runs. Our Schnooks, this date in history. That sign, we love Cameron and the Cardinals. Cameron just had a heart transplant, we understand. And he is at St. Louis Children's Hospital. So, Cam, get well and get to the ballpark. I'm sure we'll see that young man up here in the booth. Love to see him. Get well, young man. Here's Martin Prado. Two, three, and four. Prado is fly to center. See the movement on these pitches and the assortment that he has. And you get the understanding why the Cardinals are so high on a left hander, Jaime Garcia, that we're seeing tonight. 2 0 pitch. That late movement there and gets the ground ball. Garcia. Covering first, gets the out. I might surprise you. But in many ways, I look at Jaime Garcia and Rick and Keel's rookie year, and I like Garcia better. And the reasons why. You know, I just, I just, I think because of the mental aspects, I think he, he really has got an understanding. You know, he's got a commitment to, to going out there. He doesn't let peripheral things bother him. Did you see that though at the time of, of Rick's rookie season? No, I mean, remember they told us they said, oh, he had a couple bouts of that during the season, and I don't really remember it. They referenced, uh, but I'm, I'm not even talking about that. I just think it just mentally he's a little tough, well, obviously tougher. Chipper Jones, crowd number two. But I just, you know, he just goes about his business the right way. You know, he's a sponge. He's soaking up everything. You know, Tony and Duncan just rave about how Molina has guided him through it. But, you know, that that's very true. But I, I just give Jaime a lot of credit. Would you have been intrigued if Ankiel was still here? If you would have had a chance to pitch in that 20 inning game. I think anybody would. Well, say you know, it, it would be really be interesting, interesting to cool. watch. We all want to see it. Yeah. But what would it do to him? If Tony, I mean, I, I think apart. Tony would really, really think twice about that. And, you know, the last thing that the worst thing that could happen is say you did do that. And what if he goes out there and blows away six guys? How many people you think are going to say, oh, now you got to make him a pitcher every fifth day? Play the outfield the other the other four. There's a base hit for Gloss in the left field. Two out hit. So two out base hit for Gloss. That Diaz will be the hitter. Cardinals take it fast is back at McDonald's. Stop in and order a select extra value meal and receive huge discounts and Cardinals tickets. One dollar Big Mac land tickets and five dollar tickets just to name a few. Ticket fest at McDonald's is back while supplies last. To be honest I think if Tony did ask him he would refuse. I kind of think he would have done that too. With everything he had been through. Garcia. Base hit. Got to the ball and you know he got it out there in the webbing, spun to to make the throw, and he just lost control of it. Had it out on the fingertips, out on the webbing, and not in the palm of the of the hand, so he couldn't really feel it. I remember uh, talking to players even as recent as last year, and they talked about when they played catch with Ricky and Keel. And at times he would just be messing around and he'd spin a curveball. And a couple of players told me the best curveball on this team still is Ricky and Keel. He certainly had a cannon for an arm. We saw that. That didn't go away. And when he was right, he had an unbelievable breaking ball, too. Playing catch and throwing it from 60 feet, six inches on a mound to a major league hitter. You know, was still. Question whether it would have been the same, uh, oh, they would have seen it the same way. I, I completely agree. Yeah. You know, 
but it certainly would have been uh, made things interesting that night, no doubt. Two and one on Cabrera. And the Braves got off to a good start in the home run department, but you can see during this offensive slump, that the long ball has not come their way either. The last seven games. Two one pitch. Schumacher over. He's got it, and the Braves strand two. We're midway through four, and the Cardinals lead it three nothing. Scary thing is, is uh, you know, I don't think as as a whole we're hitting like we can. Um, so if we get all three aspects put together, you know, it's uh, it can get pretty scary. That's very true. When you think about this team, they've relied so much on the home run here in the first month of the season, and we really haven't seen them click all the way. With on base percentage, that's been down, especially at the start of this home stand. And Freeze rips it into left center for a base hit. Hanging breaking ball right there. Knew what to do with it. You brought up the brought up the fact that he's probably got to be pressing a little bit to hit his first home run this season. But I think you know that's a bad approach. You know, just keep on going out there and trying to hit the ball up the middle. Get your base hits. Home runs come when you're not when you're not trying to hit them. But if you're trying to have good at bats, go up there. And hit the ball hard, they'll eventually come. Garcia up to sacrifice, strike one. Jaime is a very good athlete. Now a visit with Jose Okendo. I mentioned that I visited with Garcia. He's from the same hometown as Jorge Cantu. He said at that point he has been the most famous. Of the major league players that have come through. That's the Exmo camera presented by Plaza Tire Services. You see how he dropped that the bat barrel? And there's just no way you're going to be successful doing so. One ball, one strike. I've got to call Neil Fiala because he challenged me on something. The other day I said, you know, pitchers were always taught, if you see the pitcher square around like this to elevate the ball. And I said, it's very difficult to hit the ball up. Now he says he disagrees, but it's still I, I'm, I'm correct. He still may have a technique, and he may find it's easy for him to hit the ball up, but it's much harder to get up on top and hit the ball down and pitch up. Flex your knees. You have the barrel, the bat higher. He's punching at it, just not the way that you you want to bunt. Let the ball come to you. Remember, I kind of told you like. 
if you put a glove on the end of the barrel of the bat, slide a slide a glove out there. Well, just take that bat with very soft hands, and then as the pitch comes in there, try to catch catch the 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 ball in that glove on your on your barrel, but don't stab at it. When you make contact, just have soft hands where it deadens it. Two balls, two strikes. Still showing bunt with those two strikes. Chipper Jones, third baseman, playing way in, and Troy Gloss holding, and then charging from first. And that's uh, David Freeze, the runner. And by the way, Neil Fiala has been an extremely successful college coach. Sure has. Garcia gets the bunt out on a 2 2 pitch. Sack goes 1 4. Make sure to visit Bush Bash prior to every Friday home game in the Ford Plaza for live music, player appearances throughout the year. And this Friday, it's Pags. Tom Pagnazzi will be out there. For details and future player appearances, visit cardinals.com slash promotions. That's also the AT&T Fleece Sluggy Night. 25,000 fans. And a half-price night. Half-price tickets on Friday night. Still seats available. And on what Brendan Ryan does, maybe the pitcher batting eighth is a good thing in this in this inning. One out runner at second. Tony told us he was a little disappointed that yesterday he batted the pitcher eighth and it really didn't go over. I mean, no, nobody got excited about it. Nobody yelled or screamed, and so we thought about batting the pitcher seventh tonight just to try to get people <laughs> all riled up. One and one. Brendan struck out back in the second, 0 for 1. Roam into left center field for Brendan Ryan. Struck him out on an inside pitch, frozen. He thought it was a ball. Now they're working away. 2 1. Two and two. Hey, Mark McGuire now as a hitting coach is finding out that if a team struggles or an individual struggles, he hears some of that scrutiny as Terry Pendleton will tell you the same on the other side. Wow. It's a life of a coach. And it's coaches get way too much credit when a team wins and way too much blame when things are going wrong. The players are the ones that are between the white lines. On the outside corner, and Brendan Ryan strikes out. It's four strikeouts and two of Brendan Ryan tonight. Fox Tracks tells us it's a little bit outside. Our camera from center field's a little bit off center. So that looked to be a strike. But with it off center, I'm sure Fox Tracks was more accurate. Two outs and a runner at second. And a ball outside. Skip Schumacher tonight has singled and scored and walked in the third, scored on a wild pitch. Liner into left and caught. Diaz is there. Cardinal strand a runner. We played four. Three to nothing St. Louis as we head to the fifth.
And let's take a look at our AT&T trivia question. Prior to Mark Mulder, who was the last uh, left-handed pitcher in the Cardinals' starting rotation. Hard to remember, isn't it? it sure is. Oh, man. Wow. Sterling Hitchcock. Cardinals acquired him down the stretch. 2003. That was the year the Cardinals were still mathematically alive in the final weekend of the uh, regular season. And Albert Pujols that year won the batting championship. And he pitched well. 5 and 1 down the stretch. But sure did. Kind of forgot it. Yes, we Sterling did. Sterling Hitchcock era kind of just <laughs> <laughs> blew right by. Now, prior to Sterling, was it Ricky and Keel? Yeah. Or maybe Chuck Finley. Chuck Finley. Dan Keel, Donovan Osborne. On the outside corner to David Ross. And I played with a left-hander starter for the Cardinals back in the 70s that had tremendous stuff. Pete Falcone. Pete Falcone had unbelievable stuff. And every time he took the mound, you know, you, you could see, you could see history. But if anything went wrong, and the worst thing that could ever happen is if Pete ended up hitting somebody. You know, he was such a nice guy, and if he hit somebody, then he was so terrified that, you know, and felt bad about it, that he would make sure all the Knicks pitchers were sitting on a tee right to be crushed. You, know, you, you can't, can't pitch that way. I'm, I, you can't pitch that way. I mean, he could pitch until he got to that point, and then you better you better have that bullpen ready. So what was he like then the, the following start? Back to where he back, was before? Yeah, back to no where problem. he was and everything like that. But there was a guy that I thought really could have been much, much better than his career numbers. One two pitch. Strikeout again for Garcia. And that's number three tonight. Chuck Finley was the one that taught Andy Bennis the fourth ball that helped Andy and the stretch run of a postseason team when Andy was really good. And Dan, you know, one of the things that even Dave Duncan didn't believe Andy was telling that story. He's like, he goes, hey, I invented a pitch or I came up with a pitch. He goes, yeah, sure. It normally takes a guy a minimum of a full year. To develop a pitch, and yet some of these guys pick up the cutter very quickly from Dave. Penny to me looks like a different guy. Oh, absolutely! Him. And I mean the fact that wait, Penny pitched the other day is he did it with less velocity by design. One and two. Yeah, he's incorporating more of his off-speed pitches, but he's not trying to throw the ball through a wall anymore. Going out there pitching, and he's he's been. You know, we all knew he was capable, and we wanted to see him work with Dave Duncan. But Dave might have one of his better cases again with Penny. Holiday won't come up with it. Keeps it in front, and the cloud is held to a single. Good effort from Matt Holiday on left. And as a pitcher, all you can ask is to get that effort. Even if that ball got away from him, and the ball it circled. So we'll see. It's a breaking ball. It looks like it's going to be a high trajectory. It was above the belt. Didn't really hit it hard, but Holiday really gives that nice effort. He's going to try and catch it, catch it. Then he does everything he can to keep it in front of him. But as a pitcher, if I got a fielder that makes that effort and the ball gets away from him, and even if it circles the bases or he gets a triple, I mean, I, I applaud my teammate for the effort. He tried to get there, and then he realized he wasn't going to be there, but he sacrifices his body to keep that ball in front of him to make sure it's not an extra base hit. Plaza tire service with the Exmo cam, and that's strike one. And Kalakami with a runner at first base. We've seen the Cardinals here, especially pool holes in these spots, aggressive with a runner at second, going to third. Let's see if Freeze or even Garcia would want to be aggressive in this spot trying to get a lead runner. Strike two he offered at it. The 
watching his hands here out looks like he could break a finger if he ever connected all right what do you see is he is he putting his hands way around the bat yeah watch how his his thumb and first finger are all the way exposed I've seen guys absolutely good uh, Gene Garber was an excellent runner but he would hold both hands and wrap his entire hand around the barrel of the bat and only use about six inches and but he could get a bunt down with the best of them. but if you he doesn't look like he's that accomplished as you're right he can get that finger broken by getting hit pulled it back just in enough time one and two Normally you kind of pinch the thumb and your first finger and you put it behind the bat, you know, so you can guide it. But you know, when you put wrap it around there, you've got it exposed where it can get hurt. And he'll get the bunt down with two strikes as Molina goes to first. Two three on the sacrifice, two outs, top of the lineup now for Atlanta. Plaza Tire Service Exmo Cam. Yeah, that first finger. There's the thumb there, but the first finger is out there exposed where he catches that not out on the end of the bat. He, he definitely deadened it as his right hand was completely off the bat. And then when the ball made contact, you know, it, the bat came back into his right hand to deaden it and keep it in fair territory. Two outs, runner at second base. That's why we call our crew here the best in the business. What great camera shots those were. Ooh. I want to thank folks at Plaza Tire for sponsoring the Exmo Cam. And John Lawrence running this camera. Trying to overthrow that breaking ball, and boy, you have to have soft hands as a catcher because that ball was so out in front. You have no idea what kind of spin you're going to get, and Molina makes it look easy. Here's a 1 0 pitch to Escobar. You go back and think about it. The Cardinals have two runs because two runs have scored on wild pitches for the run at third. And look at Molina just made it look so easy and kept McLeod from going to third on that wild pitch. Two and one. Escobar tonight grounded out to short, also grounded out to first. Four hits aside in this ball game. Two errors charged to Atlanta and a three nothing Cardinals lead. Strike two. The Cardinals will have Ludwig Pujols holiday coming up at the bottom of the fifth. No. Look at the standings for the Atlanta Braves. And the New York Mets lead the National League East at the start of play today by a half game over the Phillies. Florida game out, Washington game above 500, then Atlanta at 8 and 12. And it's a walk to Inel Escobar. Martin Prado will be the hitter. Runners at first and second, tying run at the plate. Prado is fly to center and grounded out to Albert Pools with Jaime Garcia covering the bag at first. A little bit high and outside. Figure that Franklin would be available to go after having the night off last night. McClellan did get up and throw in the ball game, at least warmed up last night. And the job by Jason Mott was spectacular. See, Prado thought that was a little bit low. One ball, one strike. How about the job last night of Mott? Well, it was very important. You know, more than one inning save. But as you said, Ryan Franklin had the night off. So and we went through. But four relievers that seventh inning. So it was impressive and needed. 
And I really do think McClellan, as you said, he kind of got up casually, but never really uh, extended himself. So I'm sure he's fine and really he almost kind of like a half half get up. There's a look at Boggs on the left. And Mott on the right. And Boggs, you know, he only faced one batter. He'll be out there. The two lefties will be available. Two and two. Those lefties are always available. These lefties are pretty good. Marty Mason is what, about four inches taller this year? Had knee surgery. <laughs> Hit double transplant. You know, replacement. Rips. Foul. Yeah, both did his knees replaced, so all of a sudden now, instead of being, you know, bow legged, he stands up straight and he's about four inches taller. But what a job when he's awake, he does guiding those bullpenners. Must yeah. be really thinking about, uh, you know, he's, things that are going on. He's awake out there, you know that. <laughs> I know that. He's going to be an excellent pitching coach sometime at the big league level. I was talking with Dave Duncan about what he does and. He said Marty is so good. The mechanics of these guys and Dave Duncan said hey when a guy gets to the major leagues I'm not there to teach him a curveball or slider those kind of things but I will try to accentuate their positives we'll figure that out and then game plan it so that you know I can refine little things but I'm not there to teach those type of things at this level no and, and Marty Mason is the teacher Dave Duncan is the he takes you to the uh, to the masters course and what and what I think is great about it is, is rarely will he try to reconstruct somebody but like you said he'll take what you have accentuate the positive get rid of some of your your junk stuff that gets in the way and and gives you a very positive game plan but you got to follow it and if you do you win first play in second and the Braves are strand two Ludwig Pools holiday coming up. Bottom of five, and it's been an eventful night for Ryan Ludwig. Let's take a look. Ludwig in the first inning. Could have been a double play ball. Reaches on an air. Pujols with a base hit. And Ludwig was able to advance to third on the air out in center field. And then a wild pitch, and he would score. Score all kinds of ways in this game. 3 nothing, St. Louis. Ludwig also doubled the left. Breaking ball, the strike. Well, two of the three Cardinal runs have scored on wild pitches. They committed two errors, the Atlanta Braves tonight. And when you're not hitting, 
and you're not playing top flight defense you're in trouble. Oh and two the count. I want to show you something. Look at how Dan Iasonia the the umpire is so inside there and then he has really his left hand exposed where a foul ball he could break that hand but you know sometimes wouldn't you think that you'd get right behind the catcher and you'd have a better look at you know you you're looking have a direct look at at home plate you know right in the middle ground ball to second and an out What's on tap presented by Budweiser day baseball tomorrow. And that'll be at noon. Cardinals and the Braves what's on tap presented by Budweiser the great American lager. That last pitch he was extremely uh, out in the open to be hit. Well that's it you know they stay way inside. Now some people believe they do that because if a foul ball you know, if, it, if a batter hits a foul ball, he's going to hit it right off the handle. So you're really not going to be a good spot if you're hit there. But if you're further away or further behind the home plate and hits a foul ball, it's going to be right off the sweet part of the bat and really hurt you. But maybe he feels more comfortable by staying in a consistent spot. Well, but it, it seems to me, though, you're you're guessing on the outside pitch. And tonight we've already seen the strike zone is 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 more inclined to call the inside pitch which is the pitch that you know he's he's set up inside so he sees a pitch right there he's going to call the inside pitch watch Ross and most catchers will put their throwing hand behind their backside and protect that arm and protect that wrist and hand right there Three balls and a strike. Where's Jerry Crawford when you going to talk about umpires? <laughs> Remember that game in Houston? It was unbelievable. Mike Matheny was catching, and the home plate umpire Jerry Crawford was really leaning on him. Both hands were on him. Both hands were on him. It's a fair ball off the glove of Chipper Jones, and Pujols will wind up at second base. Ball that looked like Jones could have had and. Pujols is given the devil. Well, I remember Chipper. You know he's he's getting up there a little bit, but more importantly, he's got a, a bad hamstring. He's also nursing a, a right rib cage, oblique strain. So he's not quite as mobile as he is on a on a regular day. And that still was tough. It was right over the back. Incredible ability of Albert Pujols to keep a ball fair on inside pitches, outside pitches, just goes with them. They'll walk Holiday here to get to Rasmus. Uh, this this may be because they may make a pitching change. It'll be the third intentional walk and fourth overall by the right-handed. And one of the reasons why I say that is. Kami has allowed almost a 400 average to left handed batters. Right handers came in batting 161 against him, and Betters has been warming up, and here comes Bobby Cox. This is our Chevy called to the bullpen. Johnny Venters. Will come in and face Colby Rasmus.
By Kia Motors. To learn more, visit Kia.com. By Lumiere Casino of the Cardinals win. Lumiere Place is giving away $10 in free play. Register at My Choice Center the next day. And by AT&T. Find out what's possible with the nation's fastest 3G network, AT&T. Rethink possible. Nice night here in St. Louis. The mighty Mississippi. 3 0 Cardinals, two runners on. And a lefty in to face Colby Rasmus. Johnny Ventures. He was recalled on the 17th of April from AAA when they optioned Mike Dunn, a left hander, to Gwinnett, their AAA affiliate. Combined to 29 games between. Double A and Triple A last year, eight and eleven, four point four two ERA, but he's been very effective up here. Just two for twenty, the opponents have hit against him. From Pikeville, Kentucky, might have some friends here. One zero pitch to Colby. Two balls, no strikes. Rasmus struck out in the first. And was intentionally walked to get to Molina in the third, a strategy uh, move that paid off for Bobby Cox because then Molina grounded into an inning ending double play. The 2 0. Hold. Fair. Just inside the first baseline. Who holds his in? Holiday held up, and Colby has himself an RBI double. Gloss looking at first base in the first base line to see if it was fair. I thought it went right over the bag. Let's go pitch by pitch. Presented by Chevrolet. Let me try a fastball, a little bit up and away. Another fastball totally outside. And he threw one right in the middle of the plate. Kobe hit it, and I thought it went right over the first base bag down into the corner. Plaza tire service with the Exmo cam. And they'll walk Molina to get to David Freeze. So another intentional pass being used here by Bobby Cox. This will be the fourth. And we're not even through five yet. Now this crowd was cheering Bobby before the game. As the Cardinals honored him, and now they've been pulling him with the intentional passes. I don't think it phases Bobby a bit. We've seen enough of Molina coming up with clutch hits. Let's go back to the Colby Rasmus double. It hit right in front of the bag in fair territory. Maybe even kicked up a little chalk, but then it's where it goes over the bag and first base umpire. Dale Scott said it was fair. Yeah, for Colby, that was his first hit against a lefty. There's Matt Holliday. He was intentionally walked. Rasmus with the RBI double. Intentional pass to Molina. 1 0 pitch to Freeze. One ball, one strike. Last time the Cardinals had four intentional walks. You have to go back to 2003 in September. Jammed him and out of play. Freeze tonight. Called out on strikes in the second and a single in the fourth. One and two the count. Four to nothing, Cardinals. Pittsburgh beat Milwaukee today, 6-5. San Diego over Florida, 6-4. Phillies over San Francisco by a run. Freeze, base hit! Down the right field line. One run in. Here comes another. 
Molina winds up at third. David Freeze comes through and makes him pay. Six to nothing, Cardinals. We talk about David Freeze has power to the opposite field. That was not an example of it, but it was an example of protecting the plate. Just a defensive swing, just reaching out, trying to get a little bit of it, but it stays fair. They had Gloss, the first baseman, off the first base bag, and it goes into right field and scores two. And he does it on his birthday. Happy birthday to David Freeze. Two hit night, a couple of RBIs. He now has eight. Here's Garcia, six to nothing. Cardinals. By the way, the four intentional walks is the most any team has drawn this season. And some of that strategy has come back to backfire for Bobby Cox. So five runs charged to Kawakami, and the book is closed on the starter for Atlanta. Total of 83 pitches for Kawakami tonight. Six nothing Cardinals. Garcia chopper to short. Out at second over the first double play. Cardinals will strand a runner. They've stranded five, but they add three more runs. Six to nothing after five here at Bush Stadium. Albert and for those of you that have texted in 45% said walk him we appreciate all the text tonight Jaime Garcia has been given a 6 nothing lead even though it's early it's going to be lonely in that dugout 28th of April for the Atlanta Braves with these losses they've had prior to tonight good starting pitching chance to win games and they haven't done it and they have a chance now to lose another one tonight. Well, it's also a little disappointing as many people wondered and thought that this was going to be an excellent Atlanta Braves club. And how hard would it be for Bobby Cox to say goodbye to a, a good up and coming team with a bright future ahead of it? But they've got now the gate. Uh, well, I could be, they got out fine, but it's just lately you've lost, what, seven in a row? That's right. Puppy love. Here's Chipper Jones. Chipper Jones, Bobby Cox. Most home runs to begin a career under one manager. Chipper with 428. Right behind him. Albert Pujols at 373. Those combinations, one, two in Major League Baseball history. Chipper now is 39th on the all-star all-time home run list with his 428.
Jones grounds out to Brendan Ryan and uh, the biography of Bobby Cox played with the Yankees and the manager of the Braves, manager of the Blue Jays, went into the front office for the Braves. And since 1990, he's been their manager. World Series win in 1995 and four times manager of the year. I was talking with John Smoltz before the game. He said Bobby Cox and Tony La Russa in many ways very similar where in his mind they protect their players and do a great job of managing the clubhouse which over a long season as you know Al number of years in the big leagues that's one of the dynamics long fly ball out to right stays in the park. You know it's very interesting both of them have such control of their clubhouses that neither one of them spend hardly any time in the the big room the players room. You know they kind of say well that's that's for the players. Now if we have a problem I can find them on the field or in my office or something of that nature but they give the players that space but you know because the players respect them you know there's no nobody challenging their authority and they also delegate a lot of responsibility to their coaches which you know they you know that if one of Tony Lewis's coaches come and tell you something it's coming from Tony. Those two first met Bobby Cox Tony La Russa, a long time ago and that was on May 4th 1982 at Comiskey Park White Sox would win it 4-3. Cox with Toronto and of course Tony with the White Sox and slicing and foul. Cox and Tony La Russa, including tonight have faced 156 times and Bobby leads the all time matchup between the two at 10 postseason head to head matchups they had two series back in 1996 the league championship series Cardinals actually led that three games to one you right remember. And then the uh, 2000 Division Series. Future Hall of Famer Bobby Cox in St. Louis for the final time. David Wright and the Mets take on Ryan Howard in the Phillies. Showdown between bitter and L East rivals. Coverage of Fox Saturday Baseball presented by Budweiser at a special time of 2 p.m. Central. Following this week in baseball at 1.30. And that's on Fox. Catches the outside corner. Brendan Ryan is 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. What was your reaction to the extension for Ryan Howard? I don't really get excited about that. I mean, I I think I try not to 
ever let money influence my decision about anybody. I have no problem with guys making money. I just ask that they try and earn it. And I know that, you know, everybody's trying, but it doesn't always show up. So, I mean, just go out there and give a, you know, an honest effort and be fan friendly. And I guess from a Cardinals perspective, you just wonder how that could have an impact, if at all, on future contract of uh, Albert Pools here in town. Well, it's got to have some impact. And, you know, and as John Mozalek, and, and we'll say it very delicately like he did, you know, he was asked about the contract, and he was a little surprised with the timing. And, you know, he still has two more years of his contract, so... You know, why was what was the need to go and extend it when you already have him under control for two years? A lot can happen in those two years. It is a risk. There's and, no doubt. There's no doubt. I mean, you hate to ever think about it, but a guy gets in an automobile accident, and now the, the Phillies are on the hook for all that money. So leadoff walk to Brendan Ryan. The Pujols got that huge contract. And some people said, well, he left a lot of money on the table. And the answer is yes, but that's only if he stayed healthy throughout that entire contract as it played out. And have the Cardinals gotten a good deal? No, no question about it. But at the time, Albert Pujols got a good deal, too. He still got a good deal. I mean, you know, he's grossly underpaid, but... You know, how are you in to, baseball terms? Yeah, but I mean, how are you to to project that he would have the career he's had? And Tony La Russa said he's the best player I've ever managed. He said I started saying that in year two. That's why they gave him that deal. And they gave him that deal, but I mean, I mean, he was the the player that of the last decade, the triple crown winner of the last decade, and he only played nine years. So I mean, his. He's off the charts compared to what, you know, anybody else has had a start to a career. People might have had a, a phase of their of their career that they've had his numbers, but nobody's done it for, for nine years consecutively, and no one's done it for the first nine years, and every year he's been in the big ones. I guess my reaction was the timing more than anything. Just because, well, like you said, you, I mean, know, you, got, you got two years left in the existing deal. You can let it play out. And, you know, the Phillies are, are looking at their core guys just like the Yankees have looked at their core guys trying to keep them intact. It's, it's, it's a big business on both sides. Young players, you know, want job security, so they want to lock themselves up early. They'll, they'll give up. You know, years of arbitration or years of free agency for that protection. But that's, you know, all contracts should be fair for both sides. Back to back walks. And it brings in Ludwig, who is double tonight. Roger McDowell really can't say anything but throw strikes. You go out there, you got a youngster out there, he's missing. Just, you know, hey, kid, we're already down 6 nothing. You got defense out there that's going to try and help you, but if you walk, they're going to be back on their heels. They can't do anything to help you out. They'll come out and throw strikes. Now, if you're Ryan Ludwig, you look for a pitch down the middle. Say this, give Ryan Howard a lot of credit. He's put up, obviously, great numbers, but he's got himself... In tremendous condition from when he first came to the big leagues. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, in being the kind of person he is, we're all real happy for him. And how can you how can you fault him? Runners at first and second. And a 1-0 pitch. Lovely. Slices one down the right field line. If you're the Phillies, you're thinking, okay, you got to wrap up not only Howard, but Jimmy Rollins possibly. Your second baseman is an outstanding player in Utley. 
Jason Worth is a free agent after this year. They're trying to become the first team since the Cardinals did it way back when to be nationally champs three years in a row. Uh, and, and Dan, you got to also remember. You know, they let, they let Lee, Cliff Lee go because they felt like after they got Halliday, they couldn't they couldn't afford him for whatever reason. Maybe because they felt like they were going to negotiate this deal with with Ryan Howard, but they could have Howard. They, they could have had Halliday and Cliff Lee this year and still had their guys in the contract. He has walked the bases loaded for Albert Pujols. We're trying to put this game completely out of reach. Well, maybe Johnny Better saw our, our trivia question, our, our, our question, our poll, and said said to walk Pujols. Well, he misunderstood it. He said, I'm going to walk everybody in front of Albert to get him here. Because I'm going to defy him to hit his 12th grand slam. And the fans are on their feet here at Bush Stadium. Sixth inning. Nobody out. Base is loaded. Pujols. A liner. And a double play. Pretty good strategy, wasn't it? That's how you draw it up. First time that Pujols has been retired tonight. Line drive, but right to a team. And then he fires over there and doubles up Ludwig. So runners at second and third for Matt Holliday with two outs. One of these pitchers going to pay. Opposing pitchers here in St. Louis going to pay against Holliday. Strike one. And there's something for this left hander. Watch the bases loaded. With pool holes coming up, and now he's two strikes away from getting out of the inning after pool holes with Holiday. Now he's one strike away. It was all by design. Wanted to tease the fans. Question Albert a little bit after three walks. Swinging at the first Swinging pitch. At the first pitch, but you know, how can you fault him? He got a pitch he thought he could drive. He hit it hard. It just was right at somebody. One two pitch, two and two. But it was the first pitch he ever has seen from this pitcher in his life. And normally he will take a pitch or two. Sure. That first pitcher he's seen. Bobby Cox has used four intentional walks. Here this evening, 2 2, and Holiday strikes out. So he gets out of the jam. It stays 6 to nothing.
All-Star game. DH will be used regardless of where the game is played. Any pitcher who starts a regular season game on Sunday, not on the roster for the All-Star game, will be expanded to 34 players, with 13 of those being pitchers. And one player will be designated by the manager as eligible to return to the game in the event of injury. So you're covered. Yeah, I think they're all pretty good changes. You know, obviously, as Cabrera flies out for the first out, that if there's any place, and I'm not a proponent of the DH, but if there's any place the DH should be used, it's in the All-Star game. You feel, though, that if you're going to figure out home field advantage and you do have interleague play, why not use interleague play as the barometer to figure out which league would have home field advantage for the World Series? Not an exhibition game. Well, I, I, I'm totally against uh, using the All-Star game to to decide where you know home field advantage. And your 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 test would be much more accurate. I don't really have a problem the way it was. Alternating cities. All you have to do is tell the managers to go back the old way. That hey, this isn't a contest to get every single player in the game. You know, this is this is a game that National League versus American League and have a little pride and you know have a league pride and go out to try to win the game. To me, if that's the case, and Roy Halladay is your starter for the National League. Why would he come out after two innings? You know, if you're, if you're treating it as that type of scenario, what you're saying, and he's pitching well, he should continue to stay in the game. Well, and the, the problem is, and one of the reasons why anybody who pitches on Sunday, you know, he's starter on Sunday, you know, he really it shouldn't be available for the game on Tuesday night. So that's why they're going to replace him. But, you know, if you're, if you're, you know, it's, it's, say Bobby Cox is managing the game this year. He's not going to do it, as you see. Fifth strikeout for Garcia and just freezes the hitter and off speed pitch there. And perfect. His change up 84 right on the inside corner. Preferably you wanted away, but the hitter couldn't react to it and he gets a big strikeout. But say you've got, you got divisional management, you've got somebody, the Braves. Bobby Cox is managing, and he starts Halliday, who obviously is in his own division, and he makes him pitch to the point where he can't, he has to miss his next start. Weekend series. A weekend series, and it's against your ball club. Right. You know, then, then you start raising, you know, eyebrows and say, wait a minute, you're trying to do this to, to help your team win during the regular season, not to help win this game. This would holiday it would be for both. Jaime Garcia is due up fourth for the Cardinals, so we'll see if Tony La Russa will say we've seen enough in this six-nothing ball game. He's now over the century mark in pitches. He's gets through this. He's really done his job once again. You know, he just he's pitching his game. He's allowed just four base hits. He has struck out five. Time to stretch here at Bush Stadium.
Gaskell is tonight's merchandise winner. The Hyundai Lawn Drive Inning Sweepstakes. If the Cardinals hit a home run, Alex Gaskell qualifies for the Hyundai Sonata drawing in September. To register, visit St. Charles Hyundai or a St. Louis area Hyundai dealer. A Chevy called to the bullpen, and another lefty is in for the Atlanta Braves. Eric O'Flaherty. Tenth appearance for Eric. 6'2, 220. He was claimed off of waivers by the Braves from the Seattle Mariners on November 20th, 2008. Last year with Atlanta, 78 appearances, and what a night for Jaime Garcia. Seven shutout innings, four hits allowed, all singles. He only walks one, he strikes out five, and Jaime continues his mastery. Now you look at the uh, the coaching staffs on both sides and you see consistency and a lot of people point to that as to why both these organizations along with very good players have won and there's a line on Jaime Garcia with the seven innings and the four hits but Bobby Cox 25 years Pendleton in his ninth year Roger McDowell already five years of course Tony La Russa was another base hit for Colby against the lefty that bench with Dave Duncan for 15. Jose Okendo in his 11th year. Marty Mason in his 11th year. Consistency with the uh, coaches and the staff. Dave, Dave McKay has been here for 15 years. But, you know, Dave Duncan's been with uh, Marty Mason for, for 30. And you know, tini has been here. He was in the Cardinal minor league system, but he came up. He's probably around 10 or 11 years with the Cardinals now. Tini. Yanni Molina. Nice play. Out there on the first, and they get the double play. 4 6 3. Martin Prado. Escobar. And then Gloss. Pretty nifty up the middle. Now, the reason why pitched contact and let this defense take care of business. The Home Depot doing more on defense. Takes a hit away, and it turns into a double play. He goes to his left, slides forward, dives, gets up, fires from his knees, fires a strike to Escobar, and we've already documented in this series, Escobar's really strong throwing arm made a difference. And that's taken low by David Fries. One of the big hits in this game. Came up with the bases loaded in the fifth after an intentional pass to Molina, and he made him pay. And a base hit that scored two. And David Fries on his birthday is two for three. Stavanoa, who leads the ball club and pinch hits, will, if he gets up there, will pinch hit for Jaime, but he's through either way. And I mentioned before how all those grants were given out by Cardinals Care and Vice President of Cardinals Care, Michael Hall, today, and making a speech on behalf of the players was Nick Stavanoa. Did a very nice job and was kind enough to sign some autographs and say hello to many of the kids that were in attendance. These guys are pretty, uh, pretty good ambassadors for the Cardinals. And then a walk to freeze. It's always neat when you see the young kids have a chance to meet major league players and their eyes light up. I mean, Garcia, let's look at his night. Fifth starter, who knows? He's been that one right. of their better starters. Well, it, it really, what's Tony's philosophy? My number one starter is the guy that's on the mound tonight. And Jaime handled that responsibility very, very well. He has been, every start has been a quality start. And even the one he lost against Lincecum, you know, his defense slid him down in that game. So he has not embarrassed himself in any of his starts this year. And I just think that he's, you know, he's going to hit a bump in the road eventually. But I think that uh, the Cardinals really have a keeper. It's all one pitch. And it's good finally for the Cardinals to have a lefty. And not only a lefty, but a guy that is very effective from that side. Yeah, it's just, just to have a lefty just for the sake of throwing a left-hander out there doesn't get the job done. But Tony and Dave Duncan... Everyone thinks that uh, Jaime has a bright future. And the nice thing is, he's getting off to this start. So if you do hit a bump in the road, you know, it doesn't conquer you mentally. 
you know, he just knows it's, you know, it's, hey, just one of those things that happened, and I'll bounce back. We talked about it a little bit. Carpenter's 3 0, but he isn't pitching like, like Carpenter can yet. You know that will be the case. Stavanoa pops it up. Chipper Jones in foul territory makes the play. Jaime Garcia, great work tonight. He'll exit. The Cardinals lead 6 0. be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. Cal McClellan last time out very sharp and this will be his eighth appearance. It was Monday when he faced the the Braves a very efficient one inning. No hits no walks one strikeout and he was in command. It's Hinsky, the Pinch hitter here. Good pitch by McClellan. Took something off that pitch. And quickly, it's nothing in two. And 333. As he's getting playing time sparingly, but he was really developed into a fine pinch hitter. Ball to the backstop. Alan Craig yesterday in the uh, Pacific Coast League for the Memphis Redbirds picked up an RBI now getting regular time and yeah. playing and yeah, had a couple of hits. Very apparent. Alan Craig, last year's minor league player of the year, just wasn't getting enough at bats to, to be of, of service here. And that's an adjustment for a guy that's playing every day that now he comes and rides the bench and you know, coming to the big leagues for the first time, it's it's a new experience, and that's why normally you got guys like Kinski are are your veteran pinch hitters. You hear that pretty good. Uh, isn't that a fine? Here's a ground ball, slowly hit to short. Ryan up with it, one away. And I wasn't talking about her blue fingernails. I was talking about she was filming. Right after you read the disclaimer. FoxSportsMidwest.com, and we've got highlights, videos. Matter of fact, you can see Brendan Ryan's flip cam video. Go behind the scenes with Brendan Ryan at FoxSportsMidwest.com. Now we'll be tuned in later tonight to the postgame show. Ricky's rants coming up, and he'll rant about the All Star Game. Escobar base hit just inside the left field line over to get it holiday and it's a one out double is that really is that really register you Ricky and Rance no Escobar out on the front foot and maybe 
hit a little more authority than I thought. But he hooked that ball down to the left field corner. It's the first extra base hit of the game for the the Atlanta Braves. Now one of our ball boys that they do an excellent job. Look at look at the athleticism. Even though it might have slowed it down. <laughs> Great athleticism that he just couldn't quite get out of the way of. You know, that was a 12 foot wall there that he scaled. I was talking with uh, Aaron, or is it 12 inches? And he said that one of the fans diving over the wall had a bag of Juju Bees all over him the other day. Hey, lucky it's Juju Bees rather than some of St. Louis's finest. He's pretty upset about it, too. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Just missed on the outside corner. Cardinals with the Memphis Redbirds, Springfield Cardinals, their double A affiliate, Palm Beach, their single A, along with Quad Cities, the River Bandits, Batavia, the Muck Dogs, Johnson City, and the Gulf Coast League Cardinals. Last few of those clubs will. Start up in June. Three and two. They can hit their way on. No walks allowed. Cardinals have Adam Wainwright going tomorrow. And he has been sensational again this year. There's a broken bat hit into center field. They'll hold up the runner at third, trailing by six runs. Glad to see Kobe throw that ball, but I really would like to see him have better throws. Remember the throw he made the other night where it bounced right in front of the second base bag? I mean, from the out to the outfield side of the second base bag. This one got to the mound, but, you know, come up, be aggressive. But really put, you know, keep it on a low trajectory, but he's got a good enough arm that he can muscle it out there a lot further than that. And Yachty, you see him in the background, it was McClellan had to stop it. So look at Yachty, he's a little slow to get up, but he says he's fine. And Barry Weinberg was coming out to check on him. It was an alert play by Kyle McClellan to see that his catcher was. was Hurt away from the plate. Al, he got down to block it like a catcher. <laughs> oh, we're, we're here, the back swing, or at least the bat flipped around and hit him in the elbow. Watch the bat come around here. Wow. Right broke. So the barrel of it came around and smoked. Here's a fly ball. Left field. Holiday makes the catch. They'll test him. And back to third. And the runner will stay put at first. Boy, bad base running at first. You know, Holiday, all you have to do, and Holiday didn't do it 100%, but he did it enough to scare the Braves. Come in here, come get behind him. He saw him where he had trouble with exchange, where he had everything going right to come up and fire the ball. But because he took that little throw hop and looked like he was going to throw it, that held the runner at third base. You're down by six. You're down by six, and you know, he probably didn't have the grip on it properly. And so, you know, you really almost have to have that guy be able to walk home. Now Gloss with two on and two outs. He flied out to the wall and right. When you saw that such a high throw, the guy at first base should have gone to second. No question. He's also single. That was in the fourth and struck out in the second inning. Curveball of beauty. Knee buckler. Here's the 0-2. Struck him out. Ross hitting just about 200.
drinkability of Bud Light with a refreshing taste of lime. By AT&T Uverse, a better TV experience. Visit AT&T.com for details. And by Bank of America, Cardinals banking only at Bank of America. Crowd tonight, another big crowd, 35,693. Tell you what, the way the Cardinals are playing these games, you better get your tickets now. They're going to be gobbled up the way everybody wants to come out and see the Redbirds win. Again, day baseball tomorrow. We're expecting close to 40,000. Well, there are tickets available, right? That's right. And first pitch at 1240 again Friday night. We really hope folks take advantage of it. The half price night. Jesse Chavez takes over for Atlanta, but it's a half price night on Friday with the Sluggy and the Bush Bash. Saturday, Bank of America, Albert Pools, MVP Canvas Prince. 25,000 fans will get that. And then Sunday for the kids, it's the Rawlings Albert Pujols MVP bat. After the game, you can run the bases. So a great weekend to honor Albert. And on Sunday, it's a Hunter Family Sunday. So if you purchase a regular price terrace reserve or pavilion reserve outfield reserve ticket, you get a soda and a hot dog with that for free. Kids can run the bases. There's also free ice cream before the game. So lots of things to do here at the ballpark. Yeah, that's you know this weekend, but how about the May series and the implications of this uh, how successful the Cardinals are going to be this on this homestand. Free every, tickets. Every well every Could Cardinal be. win, you take five dollars off the ticket, right? That's correct. So if they went out this entire series and they're looking for the third victory in a row, you could get what basically free tickets. 3 2 pitch to Brendan Ryan. The shadow right. One away. Six a serious number, and when the Cardinals score six, you get a 20 ounce coffee. Found the frozen drink for just a quarter the next day at On the Run at Mobile. Win or lose, Cardinals score six, you score 25 cent drinks at On the Run. Here's Schumacher. Cardinals about hit Atlanta 8 6. Mentioned that Wainwright making his fifth start of the season tomorrow afternoon for the Cardinals. He's coming off a complete game, a 2 0 loss to San Francisco. And that was his first loss of the year. That was his second consecutive complete game this year. The first time he's done that in his career. Opponents only hitting 187 against Adam Wainwright on the year. Schumacher, base hit. He's had a good night. He's been on base four times. Let's take a look at our Hardy's prime cut of the game. And it's off the bat of Colby Rasmus. That was against the lefty. First hit against the left-hander this year won't be the last. And it was a productive hit right over the first base bag down the corner. And also had an RBI out of it, right? A double back in the fifth inning. And the Cardinals have scored their runs tonight without the home run. It's like a full moon, doesn't it? On the outside corner, nothing in two. I mean, see that full moon you talk about, think about the story about Mike Shannon at Shea Stadium, looked up and saw a beautiful full moon and told everybody back home in St. Louis, I wish they could see it. 0-2 pitch. Al, I think we got a pretty good team we're going to have a chance to call this summer. We could go to seven games above 500 with a win tonight, and we're not even through April. You know what's shocking to me? And your memory is much better than I. 
Ludwig into center. But the Cardinals, they're going to try to match their start from last season. You remember the Cardinals being 14 and 7? I do remember a good start. I don't remember being that good, though. 14 and 7 after 21 games last year. They also had the best April start since 2000 last year when they ended up 16 and 7. All of it was because of Albert Pujols and the great exactly. start he got off to. About to say that. And a strike on the outside corner. Two outs and a runner at first. The 0 1 pitch to Pools. High fly ball in the center. That sends us to the ninth. 6 0 Cardinals. With that line tonight, has dropped to 1.04. Budweiser player of the game, Jaime Garcia, outstanding once again tonight. Seven innings, four hits. Some changes for the Cardinals as we move to the ninth. And the new right fielder for St. Louis, Joe Mather. And the Cardinals have a new pitcher, Mitchell Boggs, the right hander. I think it's important. Mitchell came in yesterday and walked the only man he, he faced, but. There's another one of the young arms that will get opportunities. Say if you have a, you want to give Ryan Franklin a day off like they did yesterday, instead of using Mott, they're going to use Boggs at times to close out a game. So it's always important for young pitchers, even in a six-nothing game, to get those final three outs, the last three outs of the game, get those handshakes, understand what that's all about, and enjoy it. One ball, one strike. Matt Diaz, the hitter for Atlanta. Be curious to see the lineup for Tony La Russa tomorrow, having won three straight over Atlanta, four straight overall, if they hold on. Going back in my uh, thinking about it, I think uh, Fox pitched a little more than just the one that battered last night. But maybe I was right, huh? We had what four guys that seventh inning. It's understandable how you <laughs> lose them in the shuffle. That pitch at 96, and that's one of the reasons why the Cardinals, when they moved him to the bullpen and saw this fastball in the mid 90s, they said this is something that we can really work with, and there's a real good talent that we have in Mitchell Box, and let's see if he just cuts it loose late in games or. Out of the bullpen, what kind of results we'd see? Yeah, it wouldn't be the first guy that 
comes up as a starter and really can't go deep enough into games to help you. You know, at the end of five innings, he, his pitch count would be anywhere from 90 to 110. So you're, you know, you're really not doing a service to the team that way. But he can find a home late relief. One and one the count. Melky Cabrera. Does he look a lot heavier than what? Yes. That was the first thought I had about Melky, and they've been a little disappointed in his start. Hitting under 200. But with him being in American League, you know, we just didn't see him all that much except on television. They gave up uh, Javier Vasquez as part of the deal. Braves felt going into the season they could pitch. Backhanded by Schumacher. Nope, under his glove and a base hit. Well, second hit for Melky tonight, so maybe he'll start picking up the pace once he gets out of town. We won't see the Braves till September. Right. Such a long year. And it all evens out in the end. Well, isn't it funny how times sometimes how the schedule maker really does you a favor? Catching these guys like catching these now. guys when they're like this, catching Houston when they were down. You know, Houston won won seven ball games after they left here. Lost to, to today, six four to the to uh, Cincinnati. Milwaukee lost, Cubs lost. One ball, one strike. Cardinals, the only team in the Central Division over 500. Now we give a lot of credit to, you know, different coaches that you see in uniform out there. How about Mike Aldretti and what he's done with Tony La Russa's staff last couple of years? Well, you know, that's a very good point, and Aldretti. Is a carryover, you know. He works just as hard, and you know, is an excellent hitting coach. He's a secondary hitting coach for Tony and his staff, and and uh, most of the time, Mike is behind the scenes. You don't see, you don't see him during the game. He's in working with a guy in the, you know, in the uh, down in the batting cage beneath. Many times in the video room. This could end it. 6 4 3. Erlene Bauer, happy birthday. Erlene and Larry here tonight celebrating her birthday, and they'll get a Cardinal win. 6 to nothing. Garcia has seen his ERA drop to 1.04. Mitchell Boggs finishes it off. Kawakami 